Alrighty, good morning everybody. Welcome back. We are back live once again for the final day, Barry Huey Memorial Tournament, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. We are live at the Leather Pocket. My name is Grant. We are underway. Joe Spence, Janry Cruz doing some battle this morning. Hope everybody is well. I am sitting beside the ghost at the moment. Uh, we will have Mr. Jeff Wanless joining us on the mic at some point. Up until that happens, I will take care of it. So do me a favor, help me out. Give that share button a little bit of love down on the bottom left-hand side of your screen. Fairly wide open table here for Joe. Not a huge amount of work on this table. Trying to see where the trouble is. I don't really see any. Five to the six. Maybe this shot here. Two to the three. And even that's not uh, really that difficult. <laughs> Canadians are the best commentators. I appreciate that, Larry. What's going on, Warren? Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, depending on which part of the country you're in. Could be evening, too. So we are down to the final 12 in this event. We have Ben Francis taking on Eric Vargas. On the other table, I'll try and keep one eye over on uh, that side of the room. And then behind me on the eight foots, Russ Whittle in a match, Carlos Barbosa in a match, Edwin in a match, Larry and uh, Rob Phillips. So a little bit of a different format for those that are just joining us live on the A side. Players are playing nine ball on the nine foot tables. If you make it to the B side, you'll be playing eight ball on the seven foot tables. Well, hello, Jonathan. Welcome to uh, Q Sports Live in the leather pocket this morning, afternoon. time did it shut down last night um, I got finked it was uh, the last match was Joe Spence on the stream last night so on the A side it was shut down uh, right around seven o'clock B side went for a little bit past that but uh, I didn't stick around I went home and got caught up on uh, some things that needed to be done Joe Spence drawing first blood in this match Yeah, really nice out. Very good uh, control of the cue ball early morning. That's always been my, the bane of my existence in pool is uh, morning, morning pool. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting the ribs already. And we got a welcome to the mic. First time I think that uh, Wanless and I have uh, been on a mic together, but uh, welcome, Mr. Jeff Wanless. Thanks for having me. Anytime. You know where we're at. My place. <laughs> yeah. The newly crowned general manager of the leather pocket on the mic and doing a fine job i might add lots of work still lots to go yeah but i mean hey you got the plans to to make things better which is uh which is always going to work out well just trying to make it better for the pool community for these boys <laughs> marshall my wife kelly likes your voice he's got a nice voice well thank you kelly I attribute that to uh, still having my morning voice. His head's big enough. <laughs> How did my match go yesterday? I did not. Uh, I did not play ve uh, very well. 
I can't say that I played bad. I just uh, I got nothing going on the break. Didn't make a ball on the break the whole time. And one crucial error. Yeah, one really bad missed shot. That should not have been missed. A little bit of work on this table to do. Yeah, that's a tough break. Lots of clusters in mm -hmm. the corner. And of course, it's the wrong order. <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, I think, would be kind of a case to uh, perhaps bring in the three foul rule. It is in effect. It's tough to do here, though, especially with these boys. These boys yeah, well, kick they, so well. They kick like mules. And they jump. So you got to be locked up pretty tight where the guy's got to at least go two rails. But for these guys, that's pretty easy, too. It is. Is he going three, seven, six? No, I think he's cutting the three. Three to the Trying side. Trying to come underneath. Gotcha. Oh, that combo must go to four, seven, six. Four, seven, six, yeah. But then what but do you do? I mean, still the, five the five is uh, five is not in a good spot. Well, it depends it's on how uh, it separates. He might have a five eight combo if it separates all right. Yeah, it depends. I guess what uh, what happens with this combo. If anything sticks in that pocket, it could present a challenge. Yeah, kind of depends on where the four goes to. Three ball combo. You never know yeah. where that. Well, and this is uh, this is ball a, goes. a back cut back cut combo. Really tough. You got to control almost everything in this uh, in this shot. Combo number two coming out with the breakout though, so it actually landed, settled up fairly nicely for him. He's got to be careful on the breakout though, because he doesn't want to come does. in the five. He wants to come into the eight, so he still has the four. Might have to power right through all of that instead of just kind of well, a you mid hit. Never really want to over hit a combo though. Yeah. Especially when it's just a little bit off angle, it looks like. I don't know. I think once you uh, once you got lined up on that, if you pull the trigger, that would be my way. Well, I just don't think the I missed mid the combo when I missed the breakout. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's a way you could miss the breakout, but that was a good shot. That was a great shot. Well controlled. Yeah. What's going on, Mr. Jarrett McRitchie? Uh, what happened to the stream last evening, Peter? It was uh, that was the last match. It was Joe Spence. Uh, that match yesterday was uh, was the last one. They finked me. I thought there was more to play, but Grant, alas, there was not. Grant's used to being here all night. Oh, I what, am. What an early night. It yeah, just doesn't feel right. And I'll tell you what. As soon as I was told that there was no more, I'm out of here. I was gone. <laughs> it didn't take me but two minutes <laughs> to be out of the building. Because you know you get caught. Well, why don't you stream this money match? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> nice shot. Good control Sets himself. A little bit of uh, some angle there, but uh, I think I he think can he just can float this it. in. Yeah. So we didn't miss anything last night as far as streaming goes. And a happy Thanksgiving weekend to all of our Canadian viewers out there. With Alberta COVID restrictions. With Alberta <laughs> COVID restrictions. Oh, and I'm sure it's uh, it's different all over the country, but... Uh, Ontario just opened up. They lifted everything. Really? Yeah. Well, that's encouraging. It's very encouraging. Well, of course, that, I mean, they opened everything for the vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I kind of heard the same thing, Warren. But uh, at this point, it's rumor; it's unconfirmed. I obviously haven't talked to Bob since, but I have. Have you? Yes. Going around the corner, fell off his bike. Well, that's not fun. Broke his shoulder. That's not fun at all, actually. Four to six weeks before he's even mm -hmm. even mobile. Mm -hmm. Uh, so when the A-side winner meets the B-side, so it'll be the first match will be on the 9-foots. Correct. And if the B-side beats the A-side, then we jump on over to the 8-foots. If the A-side wins, that's it. That's it, that's all. Back-to-back -back jacks, as they say. It's a good way to start the stream on a Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Right afternoon, here. I should say. 
Doesn't look like the one pass is to two. Nope. Um, he might play a safety here. I don't think he likes the back cut on it. Hey, you bet, Aaron. We thank you all for tuning in all weekend with us. We appreciate it. Aaron, you should have been here playing in this. I agree. There's uh, there's a few that uh, I thought would be here that uh, there were that a couple of here. Saskatchewan boys. I'm surprised Aaron didn't come down. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you are just tuning in, give that share button a little bit of love down on the bottom left hand side of the screen. There, <coughs> invite uh, any of your friends, share it to any of the pool groups you're associated with. The more, the merrier. Oh, he, went, he went for the back cut. I'm he surprised did. he went for that. I thought he was going to play safe for sure. Yeah, it leaves Joe a little bit tough, though. Hampered, uh, he's shooting off the rail or on the beach. He's got to put a good stroke on this. I think Joe might just up and play safe. I, yeah, I was just going to say, I think uh, I think safety is the best option because there's no way to get to the two ball. Yeah, he's looking at where he wants to run the white. He's clipping. Oh, oh, close on the. If he would have gotten past that five, it would have been decent. I'm not sure who uh, who put that on. Somebody from Q Sports Live. Bob broke his collarbone and three ribs going five miles an hour. Hit the front brake going around the corner. Surgery next Thursday. Wow. Well, there's Nick from. Q Innovations. The man, the myth, and the legend himself. Big supporter of pool, especially here in Calgary. Oh, yeah. Really Does important guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's kind of an important guy here in the Calgary pool scene. Definitely. All these all guys they, use him for all their tips, shafts, everything. Oh, yeah. You see that probably more than most. A more, lot of people do anywhere, leave yeah. all their stuff here and... Nick comes in yep. and picks it up and drops stuff off. Yeah, continually always have two or three pickups every day. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Nick's a busy boy too. He is very busy, but it's good, as and it should be. All his shafts are top notch too. He does a lot of his own work. Has his own mine, his own mine of shafts. Oh, decent jump by Joe there. Does jump he get cut. rewarded? Yes, he does. Uh, does he get like rewarded? Over the nine. But he has a shot at it. That's all you can hope for when you when you do a cut. Yeah, it's true, jump right? Cut. It is very true. Doesn't look like we're live on uh, on YouTube. Oh, there we are. There we are. I found it. Somebody checking in from the Philippines to watch. Mm -hmm. Eric's over there. Eric Vargas is over there playing Ben. Ben Francis. What's going on? Bang time on YouTube. Checking in from Florida. No, I struggle with the shot that Joe's doing here. I always end up massing and butchering the ball so bad. Yeah, when you're treetop like this, shooting over a ball, it uh, it doesn't make for a very good base on uh, on your bridge. You just don't have a natural stroke at all. Yeah. And you need like a full stroke. And there is Stephanie posting where you can go and follow along on the brackets on challenge.com. Joe put a decent stroke on it. And Did. Does he get he away gets, with it? Yes, he does. He gets away with it. Full ball hook. <laughs> that <laughs> jump was tough with the four ball there. Yeah. Four ball's just got a piece of the line. Do you try the color of money? Color of money, double jump shot. Mm, jump the three, no. jump the four. The three is too far. Uh, you don't have a big enough landing spot past the three to, yeah, I think to land and jump the four. He must have the outside edge. No, he's kicking. Is he kicking? Yeah. The Paggy Lion. Does, Does he, he get, get a rail? rail? Jinx, no you owe rail. me. Jinx, you owe me. <laughs> Currently one nothing for Ben over Eric Vargas right now. That'll be a battle. A battle of teammates. 
Pretty solid. Top four on A side here. Three of them are from Barry's team. Well, I was saying uh, I was saying yesterday that out of all of the players that show up to this event, being that it is the Hui Memorial, um, obviously his teammates are uh, are going to be gunning for the Take first place. Yeah, they're yeah. all here practicing all week. Yeah, every one of them. Very important to them. It's important for them, and it, yes. you know what? It's good. It's good for them because uh, you know Barry was. Uh, one of the staples of the Calgary pool scene, and we're we're really blessed, not only in Calgary, and I'll include all of Alberta, but uh, you know the Alberta pool scene is is very large, very robust. But specifically here in Calgary, um, we just want to play. Yeah, that's why it's important to stay open. <laughs> yeah, it is very important, yeah, and very you know what, you 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 got to do what you got to do, right? Mandates are mandates, whether uh, whether people agree with them or not, that's irrelevant. Yeah, follow the guidelines the best we can in order to stay open. That's our, that's our goal. Yep. And Barry Huey did a lot for the Calgary Pool community, and especially for Barry's team. It's well, I'll tell you, he's... For a lot of players, not just Barry's team, but for a lot of the other players. who we always reached out and did what he could for anybody and everybody. Yeah, well, and that's that's kind of what made him Captain Calgary, right? Is, uh, you know, he'd take, take guys in, give them a, a space uh, in, in his house, and he was the type if, uh, you know... He would certainly let you know where you stand with him. He wasn't shy about that, but he would also give you the shirt off of his back if you needed it. Mm -hmm. Right, and I, I really do, I miss, his, uh, I miss his energy, his aura in a pool room. Yeah, usually the loudest guy in the room. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> no doubt about that. I only met Barry a few times, but yeah, he was always a uh, rambunctious. Oh, you always, you loud, always yeah. knew where Barry, where Barry was in the pool room. But also the, the biggest cheerleader, especially for the, these boys, Barry, Barry's team too. He, was, he always backed them up, hyped them up. Yeah. Yeah, I missed the guy. Isn't that true, Peggy? Hey, Ben, or sorry, Ben, uh, Barry Huey and Ron Redding battling it out on the table up in heaven. Hey, forever pool. Decent draw shot for Joe there for shape. Yeah, really well done. Easy he's, over you know what? That he's, or hit that short. Yeah, he has been playing some pretty fire pool. Last night he put on an absolute clinic just running everything, caught a gear, and that was that. Yeah, Jared, he was, uh, I, I give full credit to Barry for kind of pulling me uh, out of the trenches. And, uh, you know, when, when a guy like Barry Huey comes and asks you to, uh, to play on his team, that's never, ever something that you say no to. And uh, when he did that for me, it was, uh, it was pretty special because, you know, at that point in my, uh, in my pool life, um, I was more just a casual player. I, I kind of played always at a, at a decent level. I won't say at a high level, but I played at a decent level. Even now, I don't think I play high level. I just play decent. And uh, when he came up and asked me to play, that's just never something that I was going to say no to. And I got a lot of... Uh, lessons, not only from Barry, but the other guys on the team. I got to learn from Bernie Mickelson and, uh, of course, John Jorgensen, JJ. So just an absolute wealth of knowledge between those three players that I kind of got to learn yeah, a little bit from. Just how team chemistry goes to just the discussions, not just that when you're at the table, when you're sitting down and the yeah, boys the, chit chat the, and yeah, talking about. Yeah, the mental side of the game and where you Staying keep focused loose. and yeah and it was uh, it was really break. great big scratch on the break there nine balls in a forgiving spot there mm -hmm. ron and barry uh, were teammates in vegas in 2000 what a great captain he is he's known as captain calgary You are correct there as well, Jarrett. 
And it's something that, you know, we, we try to carry over on the, on the stream as well, right, is take, you know, whatever knowledge we may have. And, you know, sometimes we're right, sometimes we're not. Um, but we try to, you know, call out the shots and all of those kinds of things. Now, Ben is probably better at that than I am. Um, I wouldn't I'm, know why. Yeah, it's because <laughs> I, I don't stop talking. Uh, I go on a lot of side tangents. I like to add. Uh, I like to add the spice to the to the stream. Yes, you're right? the storyteller. I am the storyteller. Yeah, but I love it. You both do. Yeah, well, that's I, great. I love and what it's we great do for the game. Yeah. Ben does a lot too. Like both Grant and Ben give back so much of their time to the pool community, often for free. That's a labor of love. And Ben's done great things here as our host pro. Look at this 4-9 setting itself up. These are always tricky, though, because you have to hit it with pace because you don't want to hang the 9. Yeah. Well, and if, uh, if you do miss, you don't want that 4-ball sticking around so that your opponent has a 4-9. So I would expect that uh, he's going to put this in with a little bit of heat on it. Mm, good stroke. To the heart. Joe Spence taking a 3-1 lead. One of the other things that will help your game, guys, and uh, Jeff can attest to this because my opinion is always biased, is the CSL IPL. Q Sports Live International Pool League, we are starting up again uh, November 1st. We're just coming out of Session 3. Session 4 starts November 1. Uh, it is a ghost league, so it is open to all players around the world. The only thing you need access to is a pool table. doesn't matter the size, doesn't matter whether it's a home table or a table at your local pool hall. You have access to a table you can play got all kinds of divisions for all levels of players as well as three-man teams brand new coming in for november 1st jeff yeah, and i will exciting. be on that good things coming yeah and if uh i will say this if you're looking to improve your game and maybe jeff can speak to that a little bit uh, but if you're looking to improve your game that's the league you want to be in well definitely because you can go back and look at your matches too so even if you had a coach or a teammate or a friend or whatever it's kind of How'd you hit that, or what, what did you play? You mm -hmm. can go back and look at shots. So, like, I go back and look at every one of my matches, see the things I'm doing well and the things I'm not doing well, and it gives you an outside look at what you're, what you're doing on the table. Look at this break. Huge. Is that two going to sit up? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, dressed. Perfect. Um, but one of the things I like about it is it, uh, it kind of puts you in that pressure situation that, uh, you know, in order to learn, in order to get better, the only way to do that is to get out of your comfort zone. Put yourself in those pressure situations as often as what you can. Yeah. With our players in the league, that happens on a weekly basis. It is a live streamed match. You stream it to uh, the private players page. And, uh, you know, it, it recreates a lot of the pressure that you would feel in a regular match. And, okay. and all the players in the league are so helpful with their feedback and whatnot. And it's, it's, it's like its own little pool community there too, but all over mm -hmm. the world. And again, you get to play when you want throughout the week. So, I mean, if you're busy on Tuesday and can't play Tuesday, which is when you usually play, and you play on Thursday, not a big deal. Nope, we don't set the times for it or the day. You play whenever is convenient for you. So there's no con time constraints. Everybody knows, it, especially with the, the COVID and whatnot and working from home, your, your time frames and your schedules are all out of whack. This gives you the freedom where you don't have to be somewhere at a certain time. Nice you little power force there from Joe. Sorry there, Jeff. Yeah, all good. That was a good shot. Plus, you get to play on the stream too. So a lot of players get nervous playing on the stream. And you even saw it at the U.S. Open when all those those first three guys playing Jed Trump. So you get 15,000 viewers on that stream. And, of course, Jed Trump's opponent knows that, Jesus, I'm playing one of the top <laughs> snooker guys. Like, so you yeah. start missing some of those little shots, and you see them overrunning their shape. You see them miscuing even. Yeah doing things they don't typically do at their local pool hall, playing in their local big tournament and whatnot, but all of a sudden you're playing Judd Trump on the stream, and it's like, Jesus, you feel the pressure, you tense up, you're holding the cue a little bit stiffer. Yeah. So, yeah, playing in the CSL League gives you that ability to get used to playing on camera. So many great photos there. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'll run through them. Uh, on this rack for those that uh, don't know who Barry who he is I've got uh, I've got a few pictures here that I'll I'll share with you as soon as uh, Joe gets out here or presumably gets out here I can't see how he wouldn't but 
Good draw shot there. I don't know if you want to draw Yikes. it back quite to the 50 yard line. Well, and which way do you cut this? I think you got to go to the same pocket as where the nine is. If you go to the if right you pocket, can. you might be hitting into the nine ball, which uh, could bring in that bottom left hand pocket, depending on how you hit it, and then who knows well, what happens with Joe the nine. Can hold for shape here, so no, you got to go around four rails, cut it back to the same pocket as uh, as the nine ball, and uh, send her up and back. Tough weight control. It is. Two pockets he's got to get around. Yeah, and he's like right 50 yard line on both. Yep. He can avoid the scratch on both sides. It's just where where he feels most comfortable to try and get the angle to the nine. Mm -hmm. If he goes bottom right corner pocket on the eight ball here, he, he's got to hit the nine. I don't know if he can hold to hit the nine here. I guess we're going to find out. He's going bottom right pocket. I wonder if he's going to change just because his no, he's with his right, right hand. hand. Yeah, yeah. Going back bottom left now. Just because he can get in a little bit closer on the cue ball. Yeah. You can worry more about making the ball rather than playing. Oh, he feathered shape. it. That was an awkward shot. It was very so awkward was shot. Not really happy with that. No. He it's won't be happy. Though, the six ball was so deep in the pocket. Like it's mm -hmm. I, those, those shots because the rail's so close. It's so hard to judge. Mm -hmm. So Joe went to hit it square and draw back, and because it's those those deep pockets that are those balls that are hung in the deep in the pocket, so tough to judge. Well, on the shelf on the on the diamond tables is really deep set. Yes. So those balls are deep. Yeah. But you know what? Not an easy task here for. Uh, well, he's, I think Jerry has to go back either. and forth too. Yeah, but you can't put a super lot of uh, a lot of right hand spin on this. It brings the cue ball back to kind of where the eight yeah. ball is, where you don't want to be. That'll do. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Wow. Gets the other scratch. Wow. Wow. That's Games. not. Uh, These guys make this game look easy. It's never easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> so many, so many different factors. Yeah. So, again, for those that uh, do not know who Mr. Barry, who he is, uh, the man, the myth, and the legend right here, standing with his mum. Couple of shots with him uh, with Q Sports Live. He was a big supporter of uh, of Q Sports Live. That's Grant there on the left. <laughs> yeah. And there's a big story behind uh, behind this uh, this jersey. The one you see here, and then this one here. Two different jerseys, and there's a a reason for that. And then of course, Steph with uh, with Barry. Same at the game, and then of course his uh, his team. So again, a dry break here from uh, from Joe. A little bit of work from one to two. Got to avoid the eight ball here as well as a seven, but then still maintain about half table in position to get to the two. To avoid Hit the eight eight ball. Got hooked behind the seven. Grant called that one. Sure did. I might have done this once or twice. Jerry's got a little bit of distance. I don't think he likes the kick here. I think Jerry's going to be jumping at the two goal. Tough jump with the three in that proximity. To try to get over the over the seven and not hit that three ball. This could be the, the color of money. But even the kick shot. Yeah, kick shot, you got to go between the five the eight. Money, who's going to play that shot in a match? <laughs> I've done it on purpose. Hundred percent. Yeah, you do crazy stuff though. But I don't <laughs> think any of these boys will try that crazy shot. They won't. I'm. I'm assuming he's looking at the two rail kick. Split the window between the five eight off the top rail, off that left side rail, and uh, just it's nudge tough, the two. It's tough to make it on this shot though. What's he doing? Oh, he's going to make the eight spot the uh, spot the eight on the spot. No. Nope. 
Oh. He was trying to put the push to by the, the four. Foul to the jump. Interesting choice. So what do you do here? You try and hold for the three to the side, or do you just play up top, take the three down to the bottom right? Three to the side. And I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, is so Joe's so good at controlling the cue. Well, that's not what I worried about. Getting too straight that you don't have the angle to get over for the four, whereas if you well, leave even it in the side pocket, you, you're always going to get over to the four. But even on this shot, it does bring in the side pocket, even with the draw. Played that well, though. He sure did. Just a little stun over. His cue ball control is uh, on point. I don't have that good of, uh, good of a cue ball. Most of us don't. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so. Touche, sir. <laughs> Touche. That's why they're playing and we're yeah, commentating. Yeah, that's why they're, uh, they're on that side of the camera. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. Now, I think you've got to set up for the 6-9. you got the perfect... Two rail around. The two yeah, rail around is a much easy, e though. It's not, but it's much easier than the single. Uh, I, th I think he'll float down. That's a tight window to hit. It. Barely gets past the side. Oof. It is a tough window to hit. Could almost play the two-way here as well. Put the six to the bottom right hand. A little bit of left well, hand spin on the cue ball. ball. He's going for it. For sure. But play a two-way cue ball. Send the yeah. cue ball up above the seven ball. Seven the side yeah, because yeah, if he missed that, he would have left it on the bottom rail. Yep. Then so long as he missed pro side, for yeah. sure. Which these boys always seem to do. They do. <laughs> At least every time I play them. <laughs> every time I play them, too. <laughs> so. Good weight there on that shot. Yep. Ends up perfect. Yeah, nice little draw shot. Touch off that side rail. Prior to the side pocket, of course. Unless he's going to push it. Yeah, perfect. Taking a pretty commanding lead with the uh, make on this nine ball. Five to one. January's had his chances, though. He has. Joe's just making less mistakes. Yeah. The other part of the league we forgot about here, I'll just touch on this real quick, is the juniors program. We have two different divisions in the uh, in the league, 17 and under, 13 and under. I recognize those two boys. Yeah, you sure do. I recognize them, too. <laughs> um, you should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so you haven't seen them much this weekend. I have not. Not at all this weekend. Um, but with the juniors, they always play for free. So if you have a junior um, that enjoys playing and you want to get them off the couch and off the Nintendo, get them signed up. You can sign up on the website, um, cslipl.com. For a juniors league anywhere, free is pretty good. Free is a good price. I don't think you can beat that anywhere. Nope. And of course, with the CSL IPL, of course, they're going to learn the game the proper way. So 100%. Not just learning in pubs as they grow up when they yeah. start hitting the, the later teens. It's they're le learning structure and etiquette. Well, and they get to learn from uh, from ev every other division, right? They have a full access to the players page, which puts them uh, puts them in touch with some pretty high level players. Uh, I'm pretty sure we'll see Joe Spence back in it. Uh, Eric. Eric Vargas will be back in it. Obviously, Ben will be there. Uh, I'm not sure if Tyler is going to be playing or not, or whether he's... Last I heard, Tyler was too busy with some of his tournaments going on, because, of course, states are kicking a little bit back up with more tournaments. They are. Plus, Tyler's got a wedding to plan, so... He does. But Tyler's always there to, to, to comment, too, every now and then, and he chimes in and looks at some of the, the matches, so... Yeah. And he also got Jim Jim Telfer that, that's around, Wayne Knight, one of the top referees. Yeah, Jim's a Jim's a great guy. Lots of uh, lots of funny moments with uh, yeah, he's with got Jim a Telfer. Great banter on him. Yeah, hearing Jim Telfer and 
Tyler Steyer go at each other is it's hilarious, and they're good friends. That's worth, the, good. that's worth the price of admission yeah. right there. <laughs> Here. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to do it. I think he plays the safe, put two behind the seven. Or the, the cue behind the seven. It's not going to like this. Nope. Did not execute that. Not an easy three. Does the three pass the eight to the bottom right hand? Yes. All day. Full pocket. Then it's not as terrible as what I thought it was. Gonna have to put a stroke on this ball too. Get some shape on the four, draw per, perhaps off that top rail. Joe Spence playing with purpose. As always. And it's so good to watch. Well, that's the thing with Barry's team though too. None of them take the like, easy matches. I've always seen them like play with all their heart every single match. Mm -hmm. No matter where they are or what they're doing, they, they, they want to win. I think it's just in built in their psyche. That has it's a lot ingrained to do with in it. Yeah. Have a purpose. Whereas you and I when we're messing around playing, we don't necessarily <laughs> have a purpose. No. <laughs> Our purpose is to mess around and yeah. have fun. Nice shot. Just off the rail so he can get in on that uh, bottom side of the cue ball. Eight and nine into the same pocket, bottom right hand corner. Even more of a commanding lead. Yeah. Well, and Joe, I think Joe's uh, looking strong. Oh, he's January, looking really strong. Catch a, catch a gear and then make it close. Yeah, you can't. Uh, you can't rule him out. Many games off. No, no. We can take a page out of uh, out of Barry, Ben, and their team, and let January know it's moving time, brother. Mm -hmm. Time to go. Yeah, Joe is on fire. Caught a massive gear. So there are all five remaining members of Barry's team celebrating the win. It's supposed to be seven. Yikes. A dry break, but two is no easy task. That is what uh, what's taking the time right here. One ball, simple shot, no issue there. Getting from the one to the two, not going to be easy. Uh, Roger, they're playing right now. Not sure what the score two is two. over there. Two two. That's that check. But Ben's Ben's breaking now. So there you go. Two two. Ben's break. Four two for Ben. Joe Spence just corrected us. 4-2 in favor of Ben Francis with him at the table. So not only is Joe playing, uh, playing his match here, obviously he has one eye on Ben Francis. Well, teammates. For sure. And Eric over there too, so. They're letting each other know what the scores are. And not terrible, wants to uh, obviously create a little bit of distance between the cue ball and the one ball. There's definitely 
a lot of distance on that shot and then uh, trying to get back down. To two yeah, ball, yeah, trying to get to that two is, uh, they could bat this round, one ball around a, a little bit. see your eyes <laughs> you want me to turn you uh, turn you down while you go uh, all right I got it so maybe they could end up uh, batting this one ball around for a little bit that two is just in a really really bad spot Interesting to see how this uh, how this game develops. You almost have to put. Uh, oh, look at this! He went for it. Disturbed the two a little bit, but uh, not enough to really make that much of a difference. Although it's, it is going to force uh, force Joe to make the one here. See if he draws this, gives himself a kick off that left hand side rail. What a shot. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that two goes by the nine ball. What a great shot. Just chopped into that just a touch too much, but what a great shot. So an opportunity here for January. Claw one back on his side. Really uh, five to the six, I think, is going to be your game-winning shot. Three to the four is not an issue. Four to five, not an issue. Five to the six. Hello, Viet. How are you, my good friend? A little bit of a lost opportunity there for January. It leaves Joe to extend the lead for himself. Hey, we're doing we're doing well. We, uh, we've got the Barry Huey Memorial that uh, has happened all weekend long. We are on final day, final 12. Final 12, get a decent payday. So entry fee was $100 for men, $70 for ladies. We had 62 players, I believe. Yes. 62 players started the event on Friday. We are finishing up today. First place going to take home $1,550. Second place for $1,050. Third place at $750. Fourth place at $500. The 5 6 spot will get $300. The 7 8 spot will get $220. And 9 to 12 get $170. And then in the players' meeting money, <laughs> first place in players' meeting money, $3,125. Second place, $1,400. 
or, sorry, 1,740. Third place, 970. Fourth, 550. Five, six spot, 287. Eighth spot, 280 bucks. Yes, yeah, so you can say it was Calcutta it wasn't done inside. It was done out in the parking lot ahead of time. So. We don't have Calcuttas here. They're illegal. We do players' meetings. <laughs> it was a good players' meeting. It was a good players' meeting. Lots were uh, lots of discussion happened yeah. during the players' meeting. Yeah, a lot of questions. Yes. And of course, we paid out fifty dollars to the top lady. Yes. That being Tony Sakamoto. Tony Sakamoto, and then, and then two hundred and fifty in bounties. bounties. <laughs> Every member of Barry's team had a bounty placed on their head. If you beat them on the A side, it was worth 30 bucks. If you beat them on the B side, it's worth 20 bucks. So, so with the of five members, we paid out much bounties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, three yeah. of them guys in the <laughs> finals here. <laughs> and of course, there was money money added to this also. And I think I've got a markup, Joe's. I think it was Joe that uh, one that I was busy reading. It was. So a decent payday. Yes. The so we're coming to put in some money to also. Yeah, we did too. Q Sports, Q Sports Live. Live yeah. yeah. And then Larry Walper put in some. Yeah. So total for first place between tournament cash and uh, player meeting money is over forty-six hundred dollars. Good payout. What's different from Calcutta to players meeting? The discussions. The name. <laughs> the discussions. Calcutta's are illegal, so we don't do those. It's a player's meeting slash safety meeting. Yes. We kind of just go over a lot of the COVID protocols. The, <laughs> the rules of the tournament. Yeah. The players we How like. Much, it's just a lot of discussion. Right? Yeah, it's a lot of discussion. How much each player might be worth. If they were to, if they were to, to win, yeah. to win, yeah. Joe looking good to put himself on the hill. One rail and out. Mm -hmm. Off the right, top right side rail. Right Does hard. want to have a little bit, a little bit of angle on uh, on this eight ball. Took a thrill the rail. That's <laughs> all right with how close the nine ball is. Didn't want to be straight on this. He's okay even from distance. That nine ball's not too far from the pocket. Yeah, it makes it harder than what it needed to be. A little bit of angle would have uh, would have done him, done him some good. But I think he might draw this back with a little bit of left hand. Yep. Gonna force that cue ball down the rail. Another or down table, I should say. Perfect stroke. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I sure gained a, a whole new level of respect for Joe's game when we were in uh, in Niagara Falls. To watch him compete at a really high level, and he was just a one-man wrecking crew. And so methodical Poised. about his game. Poised. Yeah. yeah. And uh, hits with everything with confidence. You don't ever see Joe kind of yes. baby or shy away from a shot. Yeah, if he's, he's going to shoot it, committed. Yeah, yeah, if he's going to shoot it, he he hits it. See, that's my issue. I'll be like 60-40, 50-50, yes. yeah. and I still pull the trigger. Yeah, I don't know why I missed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Joe Spence getting the job done on the hill and saves the the one time he makes a ball on a break for when he needs it. Oh, he had that one big break where he made the three balls. Oh, I suppose, yeah. But he's got shape on the one. Two rails out for the two. Two to the four. Yeah. Four to the five is probably going to be your game-winning shot. Potentially match-winning shot. Nice, nice little flick to open that up a little bit. Very smart. <laughs> I would have tied in behind it. <laughs> oh, me <I> too. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like these guys don't worry about hitting balls. They're hitting the balls on the right sides all the time. Oh, I, yeah. I hit a ball. I end up behind another ball. Because mm -hmm. You might have to put a stroke on here. Super draw off the side rail all the way back down table. Not into the side, though. 
Well, we'll delay the ending. We may as well want to watch some more great pool. Yeah. Nothing wrong with Jarner's that scenario been either. Quite a bit, so this is that's fairly easy. Jarner's got to get out on this. Yeah, so it's if, a chance uh, of anything is stringing together a few games. Yeah, it's still not an easy shot to get from yeah, the five it's to the six. A little weird to get to the six. It doesn't have an easy right. path. All the normal paths are kind of uh, kind of blocked up. I think, yeah, forward two, but it brings the seven ball into play. He's drawing. Oh, three. drawing. Drawing potentially three. Yeah, he wants to hit that third rail for sure. Good shot. Yeah, great shot. It's and this the is the thing is, Henry is no slouch on the table. No. Nope. Right? So, down, uh, There's down a lot of high stakes yeah. matches too. So he's used to pressure. Yep, yeah, 100%. <coughs> and he hasn't shown it really here, uh, but, uh, but Joe hasn't given him much of a chance to show he it. He hasn't, but I mean, he's had a couple of opportunities that I think, uh, you know, he missed on. Yeah, he would have liked to have um, back. Yeah. A couple of safeties he missed. Mm -hmm. A couple of wide open table shots that he missed too, which is not, you know, January's normal speed. January esque, yeah, no. Right, usually when you give January a sniff at a table, that's, uh, that's a tick on his side of the. Uh, of the equation. Nice little floater. Doesn't want to be hampered on the rail here. It's staring down the barrel of this shot after you've uh, kind of missed a few opportunities. We'll see how he handles that. Just a nice little floater. Take what the table gives him. It is tough to float that shot, but I think it was the right one. Typically on diamond tables with these deep shelves, if you try to overpower that and you don't hit 100% of the middle of the pocket, it it's just going to sit there and rattle. Same as what that is there. Yeah. Kind of just take the shot you're more, most comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Joe Spence looking to close escrow the nine ball for the win in the match. Just to move into the A final. Good match by Joe. Done and done. Yeah. Good shooting. Very well done. Very nice job. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to do a quick shutdown restart. We'll have another match locked, loaded, ready to rock and roll for you. Don't go far. We will be back. On behalf of myself, Jeff Wanless, and the rest of the Q Sports Live. Yeah, uh, see if we can get an update on uh, on Ben's match before we do a shutdown. Uh, no, they won't want to move over. No. But I do want to find out what the score is, and I'll update everybody on that. Uh, looks like one, two, somebody has three. I'm going to guess five, three. And let's see what Jeff says. So 5-3 uh, in favor of Ben Francis over Eric Vargas. And Ben is at the table right now. Not a very great looking table, but uh, he is at it. Uh, so with that being said, we'll do a quick shutdown, restart, get things ready for you. Don't go far. We'll be back live again with you soon. We'll see you back here in a few.